Guys, I'm here in Manhattan at the intersection of Gold Street, Maiden Lane, and Liberty Street. Now, one of these streets has more gold than is in Fort Knox. Can you guess which one? Well, if you guessed Gold Street, you'd be wrong. So I'm going to talk about the Federal Reserve Building behind me and the J.P. Morgan Building next door that it is said that there is a secret tunnel between the vault in the J.P. Morgan Building and the vault in the Federal Reserve Bank. So let's go take a look at where these things are right now. So straight ahead over here is the Federal Reserve Building and it was built in 1924. However, on the side of the building, it says it was commissioned in 1914, which is just one year after the Federal Reserve was actually created. So uh, they, <laughs> They got right busy as soon as they created the Fed and they knew that I guess they were going to be holding a whole lot of billions of dollars in gold in this building. Now this building right here is a Chase Manhattan Bank building built before the merger with JP Morgan and it was built, finished around 1963 and it has five underground levels going down to about 80 feet below the street level and about 50 feet below sea level and coincidentally the federal reserve building has the same kind of setup five levels below street level down 87 feet to the bedrock and that's where they put their gold vault yeah. so the federal reserve vault and the chase vault are both at the same level about 85 feet below the street. Now the Federal Reserve Building is kind of a wedge shaped building with the wider end over here and the narrower end over there and looking at plans that I saw on an article about this building it seems the vault is on this side of the building because this is the widest end. Now just some facts about the vault in the Federal Reserve. In 1963, it held 12,000 tons of gold. And one ton of gold is 32,150.7 ounces. In 1991, they held 315 million ounces of gold. By 2012, they held only about 212 million ounces of gold. And by 2019, that fell down to about 199 million ounces of gold, which is still 6,190 tons of gold. And for comparison, the U.S. has approximately 8,000 tons of gold. So there is about 75% of the total U.S. gold sitting right here in this basement. And there is actually more gold here than there is in Fort Knox because Fort Knox only holds about half of the U.S. gold pile. That's about 4,000 tons. This place has 6,000 tons. Now, I didn't see any measurements for how big this vault is, but this side of the building is about 60 paces for me, and that's probably about three feet. So this side of the building is probably about 180 feet. Now, the vault is lowered onto the bedrock, basically, and it has a concrete steel reinforced wall around it so there's a four foot corridor around the vault so it's kind of a vault within a vault all the way down 80 something feet below the street level and the vault is secured with pylons into the bedrock to secure it and hold it in place because they were worried that if there was ever a nuclear attack in downtown manhattan and the water level rose because of the water is not too far underground here. They didn't want the vault to pop up like a beach ball when you put it under water, how it pops up. So they actually secured it to the bedrock. So here you say, Fe Federal Reserve Bank of New York, chartered 1914, erected 1922. So around 2013, after gold and silver had a pretty big run up, there was a big controversy about Germany wanting to get some of their gold back because the gold that's held in this building is not the US's gold it's the gold of other countries like Germany France Italy and groups like the IMF and the Bank of International Settlements so 
none of the gold in here or very little of it is actual US gold and the Germans have been storing their gold here starting around in the 1950s after World War II when they had a big economic revival in Germany in the 50s and 60s and so they were storing their gold here because they were still afraid that the Russians would overtake them and come take their gold so that's why they were storing it over here and during the Bretton Woods agreement the price of gold was fixed and so Germany was cashing in <laughs> their dollars at $35 for an ounce of gold so they would buy gold in the US for $35 an ounce and store it here to the point where they have about 1500 tons of gold at the time in 2013 when they wanted to repatriate it so there was a movement in Germany to bring the gold back to Germany and they did not bring all of it back they just wanted to bring 300 tons out of the 1500 tons that they have here and they were told by the Federal Reserve that it would take a number of years to bring the gold back so a lot of people were questioning how is it going to take so many years to bring this gold back do they even have this gold or is there something fishy going on is the gold not really there was it lent out was it maybe lent out to JP Morgan Chase uh, in their metals trading business where they loan out the gold and get interest and uh, repeat rehypothecate the gold and lend it out to multiple multiple buyers the same amount of gold a lot of people had a lot of questions at the time but eventually three years later they did get back the 300 tons of gold from the New York Fed and they got back about 374 tons of gold from France as well so Germany has a lot of gold they got 3378 tons of gold and about 1200 of it is still in this building so you see how massive this building is and how old it is that they were able to put this vault in 87 feet down below the street level however in 1963 they mentioned that they had an auxiliary vault in the Fed building okay now explain to me how they can have an auxiliary vault and there were even mentions that there's a room in this auxiliary vault that has a wall of gold I think it's like 10 feet tall by 12 feet wide by 8 feet thick or something along those lines it's literally a wall of gold now once you build a, a building like this you cannot go back and dig 80 feet and add a side room for another gold vault so where did this auxiliary vault come from most likely that auxiliary vault is in the Chase Manhattan Bank vault down at the same level and coincidentally this building was built from 1957 to 1961 and the mysterious auxiliary vault was mentioned in 1963 so there is almost no way that uh, right around the time they were building this somehow they dug 80 feet down on and added on a room to this building that's been here for 40 years prior I doubt it and so the JP Morgan Chase building has a huge 350 by 100 foot 35,000 square feet 8 feet tall vault at the same exact level as the Federal Reserve building and so the theory goes and some people have mentioned that there is actually a tunnel going from the JP Morgan building right into the Fed and that tunnel would be somewhere right over here okay so right over here there's a tunnel that connects the two vaults between the Federal Reserve and the JP Morgan building and so a lot of people like Zero Hedge did stories about this back in 2013 about the secret tunnel and that the auxiliary vault is really in the Chase building right here and at the time there was a lot of conspiracy theories about JP Morgan manipulating the price of metal silver and gold and there was the whole bankrupt JP Morgan by buying silver because everybody said that they were short silver and if you buy silver it will 
create a silver short squeeze and bankrupt JP Morgan and all that stuff. JP Morgan was getting a lot of heat with a lot of the conspiracies about the metal trading and all of that and their vault connecting to the Federal Reserve vault. So the vault that they had was actually a good delivery vault for I think the New York Mercantile Exchange or the COMEX or one of those. There was a lot of theories that JP Morgan was either maybe lending out some of that gold or maybe even borrowing people's gold like Germany's gold and loaning it out and getting interest and that's why it took so long for Germany to get their gold back so there was a lot of conspiracies around but JP Morgan eventually sold this building in around 2017 they sold it for about 725 million to actually a Chinese investment firm named Fosun and so you see the name up there it says Fosun marketplace and so I don't know if that's gonna put an end to the conspiracies about the tunnel and borrowing gold or if it's gonna add some new conspiracies that uh, you know the Folsom people now maybe are utilizing that tunnel at the behest of the Chinese government or something I'm sure there's gonna be some kind of conspiracy about that but anyway this is now one Fosun Plaza where this used to be Chase Manhattan Plaza so whether there's still gold in the Chase vault or not or whether there's a tunnel here or not there is still 6,000 tons of gold in here and at today's prices that's about 358 billion dollars and for comparison the gold that the US says they hold about 8,000 tons is about 470 billion dollars and if you really want to put that into perspective, the government is trying to pass the Inflation Reduction Act and spend about, I don't know, 800 billion or so dollars. So basically they're spending about twice as much as the value of the gold that the U.S. holds to fight inflation. <laughs> so that's like saying we're going to get rid of twice as much of the gold we hold to fight inflation. Guys, I hope you like this video. I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.